Um, it is October 28th, 2021. This is the full board meeting for Community Board 11 in the Bronx. Um, I guess I could share the screen. Sure I'm doing the right thing. I don't need this. I can't. Sorry, the tab is in the way. Or the I had this up and I had to close it for whatever reason. So just remember, um, for everybody uh, who's not familiar with the way we're doing things tonight, there's no chatting unless you want to chat with the host, which is Chris Harriet or me. And if there's something, if like you're a new agency official, like uh, an elected official's office, I got to go to, sorry, my, my cash is not cleared. So the agenda has been updated, everybody. There. Okay. So Chris, can you, can you just clarify what I was starting to say about the chat? How we're doing the chat tonight? Chris, are you there? Chris Kirkham? Yes, I'm, I'm right here. Can you explain how we're doing the chat tonight? Well, they have to send a chat to me, I guess, because they're not allowed to do to everybody else. And most is going to be about the uh, general information that uh, NITIP would send to everybody in case, like, information, like, if you are a member of any elected official, if you are a member that wants to share information to all the board, and I'll be able to make you a presenter and you can share with them. Okay. So, um, did, did everyone get that? Got the sure. that? What's that oral? No, just want to make sure everyone got that, that um, the chat is going to be so closed. On, on general the to everyone except to um Jeremy and Chris. And if you're and if so for example, if you're an elected official, you're new and then Sandy Unger or Bernadette or somebody says, Oh, I would like your contact info, can we get it? We can make that person a presenter and allow them to share it in that moment in the chat. But just just for that basic basic moment. Um all right, so right. So, I'm sorry. So, everybody can see my screen now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy, you see your screen. So, oral, you're the sergeant arms. You want to lead us off with the pledge of allegiance. Okay. Hey, I have to unmute. The new word for 2021 unmuting. Uh, still get it. Still get it mixed up sometimes. All right. So everyone ready. Uh, I pledge allegiance. To the, flag. to the flag of the United States Thanks of America and to, and to the republic for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you. I don't know if maybe now in the future we have a um, moment of silent, silence, sorry, for uh, First responders, medical and military service personnel, and all victims of COVID-19, and all victims of racial unrest in the United States. I also want to just also, you know, just acknowledge the um, passing of our um, previous um, Secretary of the State, Colin Powell. He's a, the reason why you know I, I know him. I knew him because he was a City College alumni. Uh, a friend of mine, yeah. like I, I spoke to him quite a few, quite quite often when he when he came by and and spoke to us at City College. So, just want to acknowledge that also. So let's have a moment moment of silence for everything we mentioned earlier.
Okay, thank you. Okay, Jeremy, you can continue, I guess. Well, you want to talk about attendance, right? Chairman's report? Uh, yes. One of the things that um, we've been a little bit lax on, you know, I get COVID came into play over the last uh, 18 months. Uh, we had, um, if you look on your screen, I asked Jeremy to put up the um, the bylaws as far as um, what we spoke about attendance. I've already spoken to the uh, leadership committee. I announced to the leadership committee that uh, if there's any chairperson who's having a problem with one a member who's not attending, uh, that I would make some phone calls. I have already. Um, you know, the job of, of a committee member is to be at the committee meetings. This way, we have a forum and we can continue with the uh, with the business of uh, of the committee. Without a forum, we can't continue, and it's uh, you know a waste of people's time and effort. So I I implore all of you, please, if you're on a committee, be there. If you can't be there, make sure your committee chair knows. That you're not going to be in attendance because we will, we will start to enforce the um, the absentee rules. Uh, as I said, it, it was it was lax due to COVID, um, but we can't continue this way with with people just not paying any attention to um, their responsibility as committee heads. We we're all appointed by elected officials, and therefore we we don't do them justice if we don't show up um, and and do our due diligence. So as you, as you can see on the board, and, and thank you, Jeremy, he he darkened in the space that has to do with the uh, absenteeism. Um, and for the full board meetings, five total absences during uh, full board meetings. That's meetings like tonight. And you would come up before the, uh, uh, the committee to see if uh, you could be removed from the board. Um, yeah, that's something that I don't want to do, and I'm sure none of the board members, you know, the executive board members want to do, but it's something that needs to be done. So if you can't take the, um, you know, your position seriously, then, you know, either resign from the board or ask to be taken off the committee. Now, those five absences include excuses, include everything. So, you know, you're excused for the most part, unless there's a catastrophic injury or uh, catastrophic illness. And then we'll deal with that on a one on a uh, separate case basis. Uh, but I think we have to put some teeth into into this uh, into this bylaw. And we had it on the books, and I said it, it came up before us once before. We wanted to put someone off the board because of it, and the person happened to be a friend of mine. But you know that the rule is a rule, and the, the committee voted the the full board voted to keep him on. So, but again, it'll be your decision. We will bring charges against those people that are absent five times or more. So thank you. Hopefully that won't have to happen. Thanks, John. That concludes my report. What is rodeo? Yes. Veronica? Uh, no, I owe you a friends of report, a friends of a statement for September. Hi. Yeah, I'll get once I get all the info for that together, I'll get it out. I've already sent the treasurer's report um, to the office, so that'll be out shortly um, in the next couple of days. So if anybody has any questions on that, just let me know. Hazel? Hazel Mira? Yeah, hi, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone got the um, September minutes and were able to review them. Um, I believe they went out sometime this week or next or last week. So I would like to make a motion to accept the minute for September 30th, 2021. Um, do we have any discussions? I second it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Second my shadow. Any discussions? Any abstentions? Nope. Uh, unless you're 
talking if you can mute yourself. Okay, so the motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, just to clarify, there are no against, right? Hazel, nobody, no abstentions or no. I, I didn't hear anybody. I asked. All right, so then it's unanimous. So these are last month's meeting minutes. They were sent out yesterday. Um, all right, thank you. Anything else, Hazel? Thank you. No, that was it. Thank you. Okay, my report. I don't know if we have our new fellows. We have two new fellows, Joel Miller and Kira Santiago in the meeting tonight. Um, also, one thing that I've noticed and I, I wanted to talk to Pearl or somebody about for the Pledge of Allegiance, while I think, you know, we're all generally essentially um, inclined to recite the pledge for the remote meetings, it doesn't work out too well. So maybe if just oral recites it, I don't know if that's a good idea, if everybody agrees with it. But it does get really choppy if you listen to it or if you try to listen to everybody chiming in. Um, and then, um, so there's a, a couple issues tonight. So I already, I already described the chat issue. Um, and then there was an issue with, if you go to our website, if you go, there was an issue with um, the gallery session speaker signups. The city did help me get those, but if you go to the contact us page, you request speaking time and did catch everybody. I believe I caught everybody at this point. There was a glitch with this. Um, so if we go back to the agenda, those who are registered to speak tonight, I have right here A through G. Um, and it's good to see some faces in here that I have to get back to. For example, um, um, about the train trestles, I forget. I just saw his name. I just forget it offhand. Um, but I do have some people to get back to on some various issues. I'm sure there's plenty of other things I can discuss. Greg right Kessler. Now. Yes, Mr. Kislov. So, thank you, Debbie. Um, yeah, and then there's, we got requests for meeting minutes. You know, I'm, I'm obviously hounding some of you for meeting minutes. I'm trying to help, you know, help get some published. Uh, we do have land use, but for other requests we got from board members, I don't have them yet. So, unless there's any other questions, let's move on to committee reports, please. Um, is Joe Thompson in the meeting? Joanne, are you taking over? Who's who's doing tonight? Okay, hi. Yeah. Uh, so we had um, three businesses that asked for a full. They were renewals. They asked for you know a, um, a renewal liquor license applications for uh, a beer, a liquor, wine, and beer. Uh, we had no problem with all any of the any of the three. Uh, they are Golden Eagle Restaurant, a 975 Morris Park Avenue. Uh, there is also Burger Time, 1080 Morris Park Avenue, and there's also La, per La Perla Mixteca Restaurant on 28. Uh, 20, 2819 White Plains Road. All three, you know, we checked. There is no problem with police. There's no problem with the community, and it's a renewal. So I'm uh, sorry, I cannot hear anything. Sorry, I, I'm having difficulty. I don't hear anything of, in any part of the presentation. Oh, do you hear me? Hold on. Well, I'm I'm unmuted. I can hear you. I can hear everybody. I, I can hear everybody. Okay. I think I think it's her phone. It's not anyone else. It's her ah. phone. Or her, or her okay. mic. Or her, yeah. Agreed. You're coming in loud and clear, Joanne. Okay, so let me just say it's. Um, I'd like to have. A, I'd like to put all three in one motion, and then there will be a separate motion for another business. Um, so a motion of no objection to the New York State um, State Liquor Authority regarding the following three uh, license applications. That's Golden Eagle. Um. Okay. Uh, Golden Eagle Burger Time and. And La Perla Mixteca Restaurant. I second the motion. Okay, thank you. Uh, any discussion? Okay. Uh, any no, objections? These are all renewals, right? Right, Joanne. These are all renewals, and these are people that we've had no no problem with in the past. So, 
And we checked, um, we checked everything with, with the police yes, and everything. Yes, this was, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes. Okay, excellent. Okay. okay, thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, uh, any objections? Okay, I guess that passes unanimously. Uh, you, now, I'm, there was I'm another. Abstaining. Oh, you're abstaining. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, there was another business, and this was an error, and I apologize for that. It was the uh, El Sazon de Mi Abuela Corporation at 500 Morris Park Avenue. Uh, it's a new liquor license application. There is absolutely no problem with this business. They put everything in on time, and it was just like one of those human error things. So uh, we didn't vote on it, so I'd like to vote on it now. Um, there were no issues, like I said, in new li uh, liquor license application, and they did come to our meeting, which we, we encourage people, you know, new, especially new liquor license applications, we encourage them to come to the meeting, and they did. So we were very pleased with that. And so I'd like to make a motion of no objection regarding, um, I have to read this because it's a little, <laughs> okay. Um, for El Sazon de Mi Abuela Corporation um, and um, for liquor, wine, and beer. Any, any, any discussions, Joanne? I just wanted to know. Well, any sec we need a second on this. Okay. okay. I second it, Joanne. Thank you. And any discussion? Yes, I have I ha discussion. I, have quick, I just have sure. a quick question. Sorry. Sure. I don't mean to cut someone off. Did I cut someone off? Yes, you, you did. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Oral. Yes, this um this particular corner in the past that there has been no business there for quite a while. I see. Uh, and um so uh, I'm curious if it's under the same you know a new name under the same owners or a aunt or an uncle etc we we did have problems there in the past on that how, how long ago bernadette about two years three years two ago years. so okay. it's been um they re they renovated it etc but they the business has been closed i mean I, up until just, obviously, I'm kind of surprised. I'm sorry that I didn't get to the meeting or uh, check it out. I, I do apologize, but uh, there was problems there in the past. Okay, in Chris, location. I'm gonna ask Chris to chime in on this because he, he collected all the information and, uh, and, and everything was up on the up and up. Do you have anything to say about that, Chris? Well, I'm gonna add some extra years about whatever Bernadette say it's not going to be two years because two years already we've been under pandemic so nothing happened during those two years so another two years makes four four years ago I personally have gone over there they had issues because they had a billiard on the side of the restaurant now things have changed completely it's just simply food for the neighborhood and they are not far from uh, transit police they're next right next door okay, um, so. the people previously after we myself and another person had gone there um they were turning into they um they had a pool table in there i'm trying to wonder why since it's a new uh, we're giving them a full liquor license and not just a beer and wine to to basically see their good intentions so um we had asked to take away the pool table because it was attracting a different kind of element right there across the street from 180th Street train station or right next to uh, Transit 12, and which doesn't matter because we had problems there even with Transit 12 right there and right next to the um, bus stop. And um, we had asked them to take it, etc. They did, and then they, uh, the past, they brought it back in, and there were issues. There were issues there. I, I you know, is this the other business, the four, uh, the two to four, or four yes, year old business? Yes. Okay. That's why I was asking okay. if there were any similar um, people who were signing on to us. I know the name of Wello is uncle or whatever. It's a grandma. 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 Yeah. So I'm just wondering if it's a family issue and who the previous owners were and if they are family. Um, of many a times too, what they did is they covered up their whole front and side so nobody could see inside. I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I have the, the representative present. I saw her name on it. 
I mean, she's she, going to speak in the gallery. Yeah. If she, okay. If, if, but if we, if we all wait till then. But to my understanding, this was a long time ago. Like I say, two years ago, it started. Well, it, was, the, it was before that because we saw the, it was before COVID. It was before 2019. That's what that I'm it, saying. That it was closed. That was closed. No, before COVID was another two years before COVID. So it makes it already oh. four years ago. So four it's, years ago, five years ago, I've gone personally over there when I, I've taken the that, signatures. I needed for correct. something. That's correct. And the, yeah, I try to remember that. And that it, it was just a simple uh, cook and giveaway. I mean, I doubt it very much they're going to stay past 10, 10 p.m. They did. So, so, the new, the new you know, we're discussing it, but we really, maybe we should wait. Can we give them a temporary? Oh, no, I don't think they can give it temporary. Well, here, here we, Joanne, if you want, you can withdraw the motion, wait till the gallery, wait till she speaks. And then, then vote on it thereafter. I well, mean, that I is mean, an that's option. That's a good recommendation, Jeremy. I think that's a good recommendation. Okay, we can do it. We can do it after, and then um, there are questions that can be asked uh, at that time. So I'll withdraw that motion, and we'll deal with it at the gallery. Thank you. Just sir. for the record, everyone. Uh, so also again, she's having problems with her microphone. She is also abstaining from that last vote on liquor licenses. Okay. So, for the record, you have two abstentions for liquor license. Okay. Just give me two seconds. I'm going to look on my email because they filled up the question here. I can check out until what time they're thinking of keeping the restaurant open. Meanwhile, you guys continue. Yeah. Okay. I had had very similar questions to Brendan. That if the, if if it was a new, if it was on a new ownership, do they have a history of what happened there prior to their new opening and new requests it's, for um it's happened quite license. it's happened quite before with other other uh, uh restaurants yeah supposedly wanting to you know right be okay gotcha. and then they put a pool table then it becomes a lounge and you know it's it's happened often over the past yeah, especially if it's if it's, years, it's the same ownership years. that's just changing names right so okay, okay. so all right motion, so motion is withdrawn Joanne anything else uh, no, that's it. I, um, that's it. That's the end of my report. Okay, great. Uh, Ken Galnick, land use. Good evening, everybody. Land use committee finally had a meeting because we had three issues on the table. They are, as you've, if, if you've been able to read the minutes, there are two applications to renew special permits. Those were the, those were the. Well, actually, there are three motions. We're going to do two of them together and one of them separately. The first one is the meeting for the special permit exceptions for two gyms. These are the gyms of Planet Fitness. There's one on White Plains Road and Lydic Avenue. One in the shopping center where the Aldi supermarket is located. The committee met. We heard, we heard from the three who heard from the applicants. There were no objections to them. and. And the committee had a motion to recommend that the board send a letter of no objections to the application. I'd like to make that motion now to the full board that we send a letter of no. If I, no first, make the motion, send a letter of no objection to the application. We have a second on the motion. And Ken, you don't have to make a motion. It was voted on committee, right? Okay. Yes. But then we'd, then we'd like to have a discussion on the motion. Does anybody have any any discussion, any questions about these applications? I don't understand what the application actually is for. Okay, okay go ahead, Ken. Jim's, Jim's in, or maybe you better do this. Uh, you may know this better than I do as an architect. Yeah, so what it is is that they have to renew a license or permit to continue the practice of having a gym at these two locations, for example, if you're a doctor and you and you owned a you were renting out or leasing out a part of a building to practice your medicine, you may have to renew your permit to do that. So they're um, wanting to go again to the Board of Standard and Appeals to renew their license, and they were approved before prior by the Board of Standard and Appeals. It's a process you go through with the Buildings Department and with the city. You fill in exactly what you need to do, what's happening, what that what that um, purpose of that facility is. 
you submit that to the Board of Standard of, of Appeal and, and you have to go in front of the community board. And once that's presented to them, they um, there's no objections on our side for them to have the Planet Fitness um, location where it is right now. It's, it's there, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Um, it's right there on um, by the Aldi's on Gun Hill Road. And the other one is on White Plains. We vetted them. We wanted to find out if they're I had questions about the um, ventilation system. They told me it was updated. I had questions on the, um, the capacity of how many people are occupying the space. We vetted that and then they do limit that. Um, they make, and uh, we had questions on security. There was an issue at one point where we thought they were hearing rumors of, of, of lockers being broken into. We did question that. They have a solution for that. There's a space outside where it's, where it's fully monitored where people can put wallets and keys in that location. So we were satisfied with their responses to our questions about security, um, ventilation, um, process of, you know, with, with the COVID issue, we, we were satisfied with it. If you guys want to have more questions, we can talk about it, but um, we decided to go ahead and the, and approve the motions in both cases because the, the, the shops are owned by 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 the same um, management management group. Thank you for explaining that because I wasn't I wasn't sure what was going on with that, and I'm glad to hear they're doing something about the security issue because I know there were not rumors; those were facts. Okay, thank you, Debbie. No, thank you, Debbie. No problem. But we did. I I heard them too. In fact, a neighbor of mine said his lock was broken into. When he went to the Planet Fitness and Gunham Road, so they now have an area where they can you can put your your um, keys and wallets to in an outside area where it's, where it's supervised and um, in front of the staff. So I was pleased to hear that that they did have a solution for that. And it's up it's up and running right now. They have that in the front of the of the, the yeah. venue. Yeah. Okay. So now Naomi knows about it too. Yeah. It's it's there. It's 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 you know. That's it. So we we didn't and have keep some it very clean. The, the cleaning stations are always um, filled with cleaning products. Yeah, I did and talk to them about that very too. Very clean, and the ventilation is very good. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I I brought this issue up because I was at the meeting. I was hosting it, or at least helping. Yeah, uh, train somebody. I used to be a member of Planet Fitness, and this issue when I first was district manager was an issue, and I worked with the precinct to. Resolve that issue, at least at the White Plains Road location. Okay, very good, Jamie. But they have it at the yeah. gun too. Didn't didn't yeah. you get your um your locker robbed, Jeremy? The first time you went in there? <laughs> never. I've, I've <laughs> never been personally robbed. No, no. I I thought I thought I remember you complaining. No, about Jamie. It. Jamie would have told me about that. Yeah, right? sometimes the issues too. Um, what, no, it's actually one of the police officers, Bernadette, that had gotten robbed at oh, wow. one of. Police officer. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So just so everybody's clear, one of the issues at the time was um, explained to me by the deputy inspector at the time is you you know those cheap combination locks you'd use in high school when you were a kid or, or on a bike or something. But what I I don't want to give any ideas, but those are, <laughs> why those are bad is because you could wrap a towel around it and just pull really hard and yank it out of its its lock. Really? Wow. That's how simple it was. Wow. I mean, you got to be a little bit stronger than the average person, but that's, it can be done. that's why you should it's hard. In other words, it, it can be done. Okay. Okay. So let me share the screen again. The motion was made in committee. Any other discussion? So we're, we're voting on, you're voting on the one application or you want to do both? I think we should do both together. They're basically the same thing and there. There's no reason to do it. No reason to, to to split them. Okay. So, uh, well, in the, well, everybody, well, maybe we can't do it this way, Jeremy. I don't think there's too many objections to this. Are we, are they ask for any objections to the to the motion. I I mean, can I do a second motion? Because I'm okay with these three th venues. Second motion. What do you mean? The two venues. The two venues. The two venues. Right, right now. Naomi. We're doing a vote, right, Jeremy? Yeah. The two, yeah. the two yeah. planet fitnesses. Yeah. Yeah. So I second the motion to proceed. No, no, you don't have to. It's, it's it was voted on committee. 
Oh, okay. So, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Are there any object? Are there any objections to the board doing this? Any abstentions? Jeremy, I could say I think it's unanimous. Thank you, Ken. You want to go on to the next item? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to go on to the want to go on to the next one. The next one, the the, the next one is an application. Is a is a is well, it is a request from city from the Department of City Planning that they that we we get that we have no objection to and to a text amendment. As you all, as most of you know, during the pandemic, the they had the open restaurant initiative to allow the restaurants to go onto sidewalks and into the streets in various parts of the city. Now, the problem from the city's from the city's perspective is that there are many regulations about it, and what they want to do is they now want to have a new unified regulation about it, and to and to start cleaning this up. What they want what they want to do is is delete the current text amendment which which prescribes very restrictive regulations for these restaurants. You want to delete that now yeah. and that and replace it later on. The committee voted to have no objections to this. Um I am now going to I have had second thoughts about this. Oh, I believe that we can say I'm sorry. I believe that I had second thoughts about this. I believe that this should not be that this should not so, be. Ken, yeah. Ken, why don't you just read the motion and because it was already voted on committee, then make those mar remarks during the discussion phase. Okay. The motion is that we send a letter of no objection to the to the park to the city, to city planning about about deleting the text amendment. Regarding zoning, deleting its zoning article one, chapter four in its entirety. Uh, let me get back to my discussion on the motion. My problem with this is that it now leaves no regulation at all. And and it, and as part of a zoning overall zoning amendment, it's a great idea to take this and replace it with something with some with more with different language that would do what we need. If we don't, if we take this text amendment out, then you then there is no basis for for restricting these restaurants at this point in time. The city has been able to do this right now with the emergency regulations. I don't see why those can't be those can't be continued as they have been for the past 12 or 19 months until we can get a full text amendment. And therefore, I would like to now vote, even though the committee voted. For it, I would like to vote. I think it should be voted. I think it should be rejected. Does anybody have any other anything else to say about this? And then we'll have a vote on it. Kenny, it's Sandy. I agree with you because sometimes these restaurants have their outside venues, but people um, drive past, or if they make a turn onto a side street, it's become very, very dangerous because people double park and there has to be you know, right a better way of dealing with it they can do it as part of a overall text amendment right um, yeah can I mean, I, but, can, can i'm suggesting this is chris yeah. can you make it simpler i mean i'm talking about instead of using the language can you make it a little bit more like in english plain english what exactly it means that you know what are these extended i mean if you make it clearly more plain English, at least the people in general will understand what they voted on. It's in um, the, go on. Can I add something? This is Natalie. Sure. Um, so the way I understood the text amendment as being proposed for by city planning is only to remove the geographical limits that are currently on the zoning, right? And Correct. so this would only be for, for the restrictions as to where right. One of these can be placed. It right. does not mean that just because you have a restaurant there that they would be automatically allowed to have a sidewalk cafe or a street um, cafe. This is just the first step in them being able to expand the program to work with DOT. That's and right. So what, what exactly do you mean, like a, a larger, you know, like a, 
the bigger or whatever, more encompassing text amendment, because when it relates to zoning, this is the only component from it. My understanding is that they are having a, is that they are going to be having further amendments about this whole thing. And this is just, yes, this is one, this is the first step on it. I don't understand why they can't do this as part of the entire amendment. Now, what this does is it, it removes those restrictions. It will allow restaurants where they aren't now, but they've been allowed, but they can do that now with other, with other, on other, with other reasons, with other bases. I don't believe it should be done now. I think it should be done as part of an entire, as part of the entire package where, you, where you're going to do it. Don't remove the restrictions on locations now. Remove the restrictions when you when you have the entire package together. You mean to That's, work out with DOT? With DOT and, and whichever other way they whichever other way the city wants to do it. But right now, don't remove the restrictions piecemeal, and that's exactly what we're doing here. I agree. So what you what you're basically saying is, if you take away the restrictions now, you're leaving the chicken coop unattended. Part of the chicken coop unattended, not all the chicken. As as Natalie pointed out, not the entire chicken coop. It's just one part of it. It's saying that. Now you now you will not have a restriction on locations. You'll have other restrictions, yes, but I don't believe I think that the that the restrictions on locations should be kept until we have an entire a a, a a plan to do this entire restaurant restaurants because they are planning to, at this point at least as I understand it they're planning to keep on the to keep this open restaurant uh, idea alive at least in part. Oral, you want to say something? Yeah, I was texting you, Jeremy. Uh, can we, Ken, can we, um, yeah. is there, Jeremy, you tell me, I'm not, you know, I hope I'm getting the rules correct. Can we table this? Because we really need to discuss this, Ken, because, um, okay. um yeah, um, I haven't had a chance to talk to you. I, I saw it, but I was so busy because right now we're, the city's in a big, process of hiring people and getting rid of people because of this COVID thing. That's another issue. I, I'll be happy to, we need to, I'll be happy to, I'll be happy to table this one for the next meeting. Yeah. Can we do that? Because, um, um, and even, I, I may even talk to Natalie about it because, um, she's, she's right in some sense. And, um, let, can we just discuss, discuss it? Let me discuss it with you further. Can we table okay. this? I mean, so the, the, the motion is made in committee. I mean, does the committee agree? The committee has to agree. Natalie, are you okay with tab tabling the issue? Withdrawing the motion? I'm okay with withdrawing the motion and having more discussion um, about yeah. it afterwards. Yeah, amongst ourselves, because I know, Natalie, yeah. I follow you and I, and I know what you're saying. Would it, uh, I understand that also. Uh, Jeremy, uh, um, I agree with Ken, would it, it make sense to have like someone um, from the city? come to the meeting to kind of answer any questions and clarify because it sounds like so he was he was there the, he answered he answered he was, all the was, questions oh he was okay he, he okay. was there this came up after after the meeting i i was having second thoughts about it after the meeting he and, was there he fully he fully discussed it so we we just have to revisit it just to just to get it clarified so we can even when we come to you guys have a better um definition of what's going on and that's what I want to do. I don't want to go into more detail right now because I, I just want to look into it further. Because Ken has some strong points. I just want to get it clarified. And then so when we come to you guys the next time, we'll be a lot clearer. Because I don't think we're clear enough to even you, even the audience here, to understanding what's what's happening. Or, or, or Kenny, may I ask yeah. a question, please? Sure. sure. sure Andrea. Um, before the next meeting, is it possible that somebody to send out to all our, our board members? Exactly what's going on because yeah. I I'm really confused. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try That's to do right. some more research because again I'm an architect. I work, I work for the city. I'll look into it and hopefully Andrea I can get back to you and no promises. But no, I'll I understand. Just a simple couple of lines so I know exactly what it is. You got it. Discussing. You got it. You're right. Okay. I right. appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. John Johnson's in the meeting. He's part of the land use committee. He's also okay with withdrawing the motion. Um, I, we do have a recording of the meeting. I, I don't know if it's on YouTube. I can publish it to YouTube and we do have minutes. So Ken or I yeah. want you to make sure you look at Natalie's minutes. Yeah. Cause I do have members yeah. of the public yeah, asking for them. 
And they're entitled to them now? Yep. So, we, not, a, not, not that's, that's okay, Ken. I mean, that's okay, um, Jeremy. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, and also, I, this is Chris. I just wanted to to add something. I mean, we saw that the mayor came out with something new, giving orders to DOT to go out and check out these extensions that are be done, and if they are not useful, they have to be removed. So now, with this amendment be, being done, isn't that kind of contradicts itself? Extension? What are you What are you talking about, Chris? I'm not sure what you're saying. Three, three, two, two, cafes yeah. and everything else. Maybe we we can take up that issue with the land use meeting also as a in the, in the sense in an ancillary sense, and to ask them about that also. Yeah, right. I'm not sure of what that. You know, I have to look into that, Chris, to tell you the truth. Yeah, because he about, came he yeah, came with new yeah, orders. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And he gave to DOT the okay to go around and look around this so-called sidewalk affairs that are in the middle of nowhere especially the ones that are on the street taking parking spaces that if they are not used, they have to be removed. Uh, so parking spaces can be, is that part of this amendment? I'm just asking if it's part no, of this, then no, it's a lot no, of to clear. No, 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 that wasn't. This was more of, of trying to figure out there. They, right now they want to just limit it to certain locations. And I guess the locations that are being where it's actually being used, but there are some safety issues that really, they really need to look at some. Some you know where does the where does the property line extend beyond that building? Mm -hmm. For example, right? Like if your building mm -hmm. is here, you own a home. Your your property line, your building is here, so you're responsible for anything that happens within that zone, right? But outside of that zone, if something happens, is is the city responsible or, or is the owner responsible? Because now it's in the street, it's in the street right of way, right? So. These things they have to address in the new text amendment because there's in, in, in also now you have to have these barriers right it will cause turning a corner and you, what kind of barriers are you going to put put in place you know so when you have a zoning are you going to try to just um, define the type of barriers you'll have around these these cafes that are actually in the street actually in the right of way and you're right there's some areas that where it's not even being used I guess the mayor is seeing seeing that. If it's not being used, then why are you taking up parking space? So maybe that's what he's addressing. But places like in Manhattan where it is being used, how are you keeping um, the people who are sitting at tables, even pedestrians, safe from from motor vehicles? And how's that insurance work? If if anyone is trips or falls down in that area, who's responsible? Who who maintains that sidewalk? Who maintains that street? All those things they didn't really address in they don't address right now in the current text amendment because it's not there it's, this is brand new on the COVID. so these are kind of things that they need to start addressing however they wanted to start saying that you know can we zone it can we begin zoning areas that can have these outdoor spaces for restaurants basically in so, a so until now they didn't do nothing like that meaning that within these two years god forbid somebody fell no, continue suing the city or they continue no. somebody, suing the... somebody was still no. suing if we did it's <laughs> no it still has to be clarified that's like why, everything that's has been they, done that's now awkward addressing it because they're seeing that some areas is a big success because it even expands the the um the amount of people you can have in a restaurant right maybe you can only have 70 people in a restaurant now with the outside cafe you're adding 20 more people that's a lot of money so the restaurant is actually making more money now. It's, it's, it's now with COVID restrictions being eased, you can have full capacity within your restaurant, especially during the spring, and full capacity outside. How does that How does that work out? So they got to look. So at that. all right. So a couple a couple things. I know Yahi wants to say something, but before that, Avril Francis reached out to me. If you're calling in, it's star six. Avril, do you still want to say something? I think Edith Blitzer also joined the meeting. Um. If you want to unmute yourself, either just to make sure I know it's you, Avril, star six, or Edith Blitzer, just to acknowledge so I can get you for attendance. If not, Yahe. Yeah, I, I really don't want to say anything other than I thought we were tabling this, but this is continuing. We can just move it back to the committee, and anyone who has passion over it, please attend the committee meeting so they can have a yep. robust meeting. Yep. And by the time it gets to us, it's uh, you know ninety percent done. So I just want to move on. That's fine. Yeah, Jeremy, that's fine. We agree. Jeremy, you can hear me. I hear you, Edie. 
Okay. You here with me, Jeremy? Yeah, April, yeah. Yeah, that's me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So, star six to mute. All right, so moving on. Thank you, Yahe. Well, anything else, Ken? That's it for your committee, right? Yes, the, I'm sorry. Yes, that's it for my committee. We'll and we will tell everybody when we have the next meeting and when we're gonna to, to discuss this more. Thank you, everybody. I'm Mr. Baycoat uh, and or Sandy. I know you had a meeting. If there's anything you want to announce, no, we'll they're in on. the minutes. The minutes should be published. Joanne wrote them up, and we just had um, a great um, presentation by the um, emergency. Preparedness coalition, they would love to come to the regular board meeting and give a 10 or 15 minute presentation. But I think we would need prior approval. Okay, thank you, Sandy uh, Hazel Welcome. housing committee. Hi, yes, good evening again. I'm um, Jerry, I have to apologize. I did write up the minutes and I had saved them on a, on a, on a little scan disc. And I thought I had sent them to you, but I didn't. And I, I can't find the scan disc. So I'm going to be looking for that. But we did have a meeting regarding the 2440 Poplar street address where they want to put a 200 bed um, male shelter. And um, there were um, community people present, thank goodness. And basically they told us that um, they will be having 24 seven security internally. It'll be limited externally. They'll be having, I think they said 48 uh, security guards. That's probably rotating the 27 hour um they will be employing about 175 people and they're going to be trying to hire from within the community that 175 i may may have misunderstood that number but i know it's it's they that's what i wrote down um they are gonna they are going to intensively be screening the participants there will be uh i think it's pronounced sarah restrictions so there will be no um, um, sex offenders living there. They will be having cameras all around the sites. And they did say that this was um, a property that the community board had sent them. Um, I don't remember that, but uh, I couldn't argue because I wasn't sure about that. But all in all, it was a pretty good meeting. Um, it was well attended and everybody was very respectful to everybody else. But I will be writing up the minutes and I'll be sent. I mean, hopefully I'll find my little scan disc and I'll be able to send you the minutes. Thank you. Uh, Hazel, it's Al. Can you find out if there's a way of getting some members of the community on that screening committee? Sure, I can, I can reach out to them. Thank you. Hey, so can I ask you a question about this? Sure. I apologize for not being at the meeting. Um, did anybody ask a question about accountability for any of the res uh, any of the residents that are going to be there when they are not in the shelter? And well, it's not, going it's, it's not the kind of shelter where they're going to be getting kicked out every day. So they are going to be having programs within the shelter within the shelter for them. They do have a courtyard um, that'll be in the middle of the facility. So they're not really encouraging them to go out into the community. Um, they do have a 10 o'clock curfew, but they're not going to be locking anybody out. But whoever um, violates that curfew will be transferred out of this particular facility. So, um, according well, to what we be able to get privy to that information. Uh, that I don't know. I mean, this, you know, this is just in. The planning stages, this is not, I don't even think they've broken ground yet and they no, may they not on our new mayor. So, but, um, 
it it did sound like they were pretty on top of everything they did listen to all of our concerns um you know the, all the schools were brought up and all the programs were brought up around there um so but you know i was i was pretty confident in what they were saying i don't think they were really lying to us but you know these people they have a script sometimes so yes um, i do I, I wouldn't trust the script but um, yeah. uh were the people who live across the street in the private homes etc present at this meeting um there were some there was some i'm not exactly sure where they were they were from um i can get you i can get you um a copy of the attendance because i took almost i think i took almost everybody's name down hey and hazel it's, it's rich yeah there were people from the neighborhood there i wasn't not exactly no, don't know I'm, where I'm, exactly but they were from the neighborhood yeah no that's what i'm saying there were people i like i said i don't know exactly what block they lived on but i did uh make a copy of the chat bernadette so i can get that to you also okay i i'm also going to um i i know that it's on on youtube so i will i will be listening to the housing meeting and uh um i'll be getting back to you on that you know maybe on a discussion okay great i'd look forward to it Thanks. i wouldn't trust them i'm sorry yeah no i know not, I know uh, not as far as i could spit but hey <laughs> Thank okay, you. Hazel, just one quick question, if I may. Sure. Do, did they say that they're going to offer some training, job training, et cetera, while they're in the shelter? I mean, what are yeah. these people going to do all day? Yes, that's exactly what they said. There will be a lot of training for them, job training, um, and not only training, but, you know, employment, train, you know, getting them jobs. And like I said, they, they're not encouraging them to leave the facility because it's not, you know, there's a lot of shelters where you have to leave like at eight o'clock and then you have to come back at six o'clock. This is not gonna be one of those shelters. They're not encouraging the people to leave. Like the way that the, the, the building is gonna be structured, they said there is gonna be a courtyard in the middle so that they can hang out and they have activities there for them. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I, I'm not an architect. We do have an architect, and he could probably look at the plans and and figure out if that's exactly what it is. But they did they did stress that you know they they are very strict on curfew. They have to be there back in the building at ten o'clock. If not, they're going to get kicked out of this particular facility. Okay, one last question, Hazel, and then I'll I'll not ask again. Um, did they happen to say that the people that they were that were going to be going into this facility were they members or residents of or families of Community Board 11? Was that well, discussed at all? Yeah, that question did come up. I believe it did come up. What 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 these facilities are always saying is that they're first going to bring in you know the people that live within the community. But then again, you know, we don't know exactly how many homeless men we have in this community that will be willing to go into the facility. So they never they disclose that information. That's why they haven't in the past. And that's why I was mm -hmm. just wondering if there was if you had uh, gotten. Well, no, some they, sort of like, yeah, no, but what I'm saying is like they said the same thing that every other facility says to us. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try and reach out to community people and bring in everybody. And then if it's not from the communities from the Bronx, and then you know, and then who knows who they bring in. That is a big issue. Um, there's no transparency, and they had said in the past that there were um, over 800 people from Community Board 11 that would be serviced by, in the past, community uh, shelters. And when asked, well, are these families? Are these men? Are no, the Department of Homeland Services was um, not transparent with that information. And uh, we we want to make sure that people who come into um, you know Waters Place uh, areas that will say that they are from the community, but they're they're basically in the program, a substance program or whatever. Um, and yeah. uh, I mean, this is this is all these little loopholes that that we're just not getting a. They're saying one thing, and we're not getting the transparency. Correct. This is why we really have to stay on top of.
of all of these agencies. We can't just, you know, have a meeting and forget about it. We really need to stay on top of them. Yes. Thank Hazel, you. if I can ask you a question, it's Edith. What is the name of the company that's going to sponsor the shelter? You know, I don't have that those notes with me. Uh, maybe uh -huh. Jeremy or Chris can can fill in fill in that blank for me. I'm very curious, and I'll tell you why. We had the, the shelter on um, Barnes and Lydic, if you're aware of it. And it's I think there were six or seven men living in there right now. And so far, it's been working. So we really don't need any more. Um, but these people have to be out of there by 8 in the morning, and they have to be back by 7. And there are some people that are working in the community. The community stores have given them jobs, and it's working out quite well. Yeah, but this is this is a special, you know, the one the facility right. that we have on Barnes Avenue is special. Um, this other Very shelter, is just, yeah, and it's just for males, and it's gonna be two hundred males, and um, right. yeah, so yeah, it's. Well, that's why I'm curious to know the company that's going to handle that it's because not, it, the, yeah, but it's it's not the same company, unfortunately. Okay, that's all I want to know because yeah. this one has a good company running. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Edith. Uh, yes. Excuse me. That that sounds like more of a program, but not a shelter. Am I correct? These are for homeless men. It is a shelter. It no, is ma a sh no matter how you look at it, it's for homeless people. I know, but sometimes they are programs that are housed within a building, um, a program yet, and the Department of Homeless Service, they will not notice that as a shelter, but a program that is totally separate. So yeah, but I'm this is an entire building that they have. It's not apartments in a building. It's the entire okay. building. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So unless there's anything else for housing, let's move on. Share the screen again. And we have sanitation, environmental protection. I don't think Joanne is in the meeting. So, unless there's any other uh, announcements or reports from committees, we should move it to the gallery. I know some people are. Um, Jeremy, I have a question, if I may. The Parks Committee, I understand that meeting date was changed. Yeah, Parks is looking at meeting. Uh, they want to. Normally on the second Thursday of the month, November is Veterans Day, so it's going to be the 10th of November, yeah, Wednesday the 10th. Wednesday the 10th was moved to? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Jeremy, might um, I be able to say something about the uh, Education, Culture, and Youth Services uh, Committee meeting? Yeah. Yeah, you email. Yeah, yes. You want to meet, right, I, on I, Wednesday? I, uh, yes, yes. So we'll be, we, uh, we're definitely going to be meeting on uh Wednesday, November 3rd, 7 p.m. via WebEx. Um, and I welcome anybody who would like to, who cares about our children's education, which is definitely a priority these days and really needs a lot of reinforcement and a lot of um, discussion. And uh, I urge people to come as a guest and any other board members that do want to be a part of this. Um, the more the merrier, there's strength in numbers. So I urge you to come. And I will just make one note. Uh, as of tomorrow, uh, October 29th at 5 p.m. is the last day to submit for the Youth, Le Youth Leadership Award. Uh, if there's any other uh, nominees that would like to be a part of this, please submit them through an organization, whether it be um, Pelham Parkway Neighborhood Association, Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance, Forest Park Community Association, etc. Uh, but please, you have until tomorrow, which is Friday, October 29th at 5 p.m. Thank you. Right, you can see my screen. I'm sharing this from the CB11 website. There's two ways to go about accessing this um, memorandum. Um, be nice if my uh, computer moving a little bit quicker, but you go to the contact us page, request Yankee tickets. There's a link there. We don't have any Yankee games coming up. This is for a previous game. If you go to forms and guidelines, we have the youth leadership memorandum right there. Anybody want to supply? It's a stipend of $750 for any deserving youth. We can select up to five every year, and the Yankees have never denied us an applicant yet. 
Thank you very What's much for the age of Jeremy. What's the age of Jeremy or Bernadette? So uh, if 14 you go to 20. To, yes, that's the current age range we're seeking. That is the criteria. They have to be 14 uh, from 14 to 20 to take part in somehow. This. And they have to have a connection to our district. So if they're, if they're not, if they're not, if they're not a resident of our district, they need to perform their services for the benefit of our district. All the information, if you can get a chance, all the information is what Jeremy is showing you on his shared screen. Uh, if anybody wants PDF sent to them, ask the community board 11, or you could email me and I will gladly send you all the information. But we only have, unfortunately, until tomorrow at 5 p.m. Thank you. Oh, sorry, right, one more so, question. Uh, how many how many applications have you received so far? I just requested uh, that information this afternoon. So far, uh, Jeremy, you could tell me if there's any more than the ones that I know of. We don't have five. I think we only. I think we only have five. Um, I. I mean. We have one for Allerton yeah. Merchants that we're going to be sending in. Okay. So we'll get it to you before five o'clock tomorrow. Let's just make sure. Yeah, go for your three your criteria, resumes, uh, all the information. Thank you. So just remember, if you're a board member and you're submitting, you, you are uh, submitting an application on behalf of anybody, you cannot vote. You cannot be involved in the selection process, whether it's for your applicant or against another one. Yes. All right. So moving back to the agenda, um, gallery session speakers. Plug in my laptop before it dies on me. Um, uh, Miranda, I don't know if Miranda, a good one. Rab is in. Hi. I'm here. So Miranda, you have two minutes of under, uninterrupted speaking time, and thereafter you can respond to at most only four questions or comments by board members, and only board members. Great. Um, can I share my screen really quickly? Okay, Miranda, yeah, you want me to tell you when you when you're ready to almost be up? Or I'm ready right now. Okay, no, I'm going to time you. Okay, so when okay, you're ready. Cool. Yeah, sorry. Um, so the so the artist on the um the speaker is what type of warning do you want? Got it. Um, whatever warning you want to give me. Three second warning. Okay, you got please. it. I, 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 I'll, I'll let her know. That's fine. Yeah. I got I got you, Miranda. Thank you. Hi, okay. everyone. Uh, my name is Miranda goodwin Rab. I'm the Assistant Director of Engagement for the New York State Independent Redistricting Commission. Um, thank you so much for giving me this time tonight. I'm just going to give a brief presentation. Um, so I'm sure many of you know, um, but just as a quick overview, redistricting happens after the census, which I'm sure many of you were active in participating in. Um, after the census, we have to redraw congressional, state senate, and state assembly lines. Um, city council and other municipal things will follow after that. Um, so population moves, it grows, it moves around the state, people leave the state, people have babies, et cetera, et cetera. So these lines need to be adjusted. Um, as I'm sure many of you know, we are losing a congressional seat. That doesn't mean you'll lose representation in Congress, but it does mean the lines um, throughout the state will change. So quick timeline, the commission was created in 2014 from a ballot proposal. Um, we have 10 commissioners that are um, eight of them are appointed by legislative leaders within um, the state legislature, so four Democrats, four Republicans, and then each um, group of those gets to appoint an independent that is affiliated with them, if you will. Um, we've released uh, draft maps through the commission that we are actively seeking your input on. Um, and once we get community input, um, we are redrawing those lines, um, working together as a commission, and then we will present an, uh, another draft to the legislature. The legislature can then um, you know, vote to pass or deny that we have another chance to redo those drafts and then those um, lines get approved or rejected formally by the legislature. Um, so yeah, so these are the commissioners that are pictured here. We have another commissioner who's also not pictured. Um, and, you know, they have a really wide variety of experiences of knowledge about the state. Um, but basically the reason that I'm here is because we are having 14 um, hearings throughout the state. We've just completed five of them. So Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, um, Binghamton, and we did um, Plattsburgh as well. And um, starting on November 9th in the Bronx, we will be doing um, our public hearings throughout the city. So on November 9th at 3 p.m. until whenever the cows come home, um, we will be hearing a uh, public comment from residents of the Bronx. Um, mm -hmm. We encourage you to look at our draft maps that we've proposed, as well as tell us about your community. Tell us about the things that we can't um, that we can't know from the census, right? Tell mm -hmm. us the places that keep your communities together. Yeah. 
um, right. excuse me, um, tell us the places that keep your communities together, whether it's schools, places of worship, grocery stores, um, you know, draw us a map, give us geographical boundaries, tell us what you have in common with your residents, um, things like that. Excuse me, oh, sorry, okay, I lost I don't, I don't know who's talking. Someone has to mute. Christina, did you have a question? Because if not, please mute. Uh, yeah, I, you have your hand up or? No, something happened. I think someone was interrupting Miranda when she was speaking. I'm sorry about that, but um, your time is up anyway. But um, okay, maybe give her 30 seconds, seconds back. Just five seconds is all I need. We just, we're five, really. Can everyone, can everyone please be quiet and mute your phone? Let that me mute all. all. Let me mute all. Hold Miranda, on. finish talking, hold on, please. Hold on. Hey, do not do not unmute yourselves, please, until until Miranda is ready for questions. If you're a board member, go ahead, Miranda. Okay, Miranda. Go ahead, you can continue. Thank you. I'll be really fast. Just um, we are actively seeking input from residents. You know, you know your communities much more than we ever will, um, and that input and that you know institutional knowledge is invaluable to us. So we really want to hear from you. Um, you know, nothing is too small, nothing is too big. Again, this is congressional lines, state senate lines, and state assembly. Um, and, you know, this goes into the record of New York State, so you will forever be a part of this historic process. This is the first time it's happened, and it's only once every 10 years. So if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Sorry. I know it's quick. Thank I know it's two minutes. I'm no, sorry. Don't quick. worry about it. I've, I've got it down. <laughs> I, I do have a. I do have a quick question. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm looking forward to it. I already registered, so Please. you will see me there. But it is in person. It is in person. Am I correct? It is in person, and there is also a virtual component. If someone doesn't feel comfortable, or you know, has mobility issues, or anything along those lines, and um, we accept either kind. Um, Thank you. Any, I, any encourage every, I encourage everybody in our community to check things out and to please participate. It does make a difference. So please, please participate. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? And to Bernadette's point, um, we also, you know, if you can't make that day for some reason, we accept all kinds of input on our website, which I just put the link to in our chat. Um, so, you know, whether it's a description, whether it's a map on your iPhone, a screenshot that you draw with your finger, um, literally nothing is too small, nothing is too big. We want anything you can tell us. This is once in a decade, um, and I can't stress how important it is. Um, thank you, Miranda. Thank you so much for your time. Good evening, everyone. Okay. So, um, so some people have asked me, why are some people allowed to chat? I think I just eliminated that. Um, let me go back to the gallery session. So we have people from the Cuddy Bar Lounge, or at least, no, I'm sorry, people complain about Cuddy Bar and Lounge. I know one person had to leave. I don't know if he had left already. Um, I think that was Andre Lamarde or Angela, you know, who, who, is, who is here to speak? I believe Kathy Gilbert is one of the tenants that will be speaking on behalf. No, of she's Kathy. definitely on the list, but you said somebody else had to leave. Andre Andre Lamont had to leave because he had to teach a class. Okay. okay, so if it's okay with you, then we'll go back to Catherine, and then you, Catherine. No problem. Sure. Okay, Catherine, you have your time. Okay, um, I've lived here for six years at the at tw the twenty five thirty Holland Avenue. And honestly, I have not noticed noise until COVID. And I know other residents have been like, they've re recognized it, but I did not recognize anything until COVID. And it was mainly the outdoor dining for the COVID, for the Cuddy Lounge. I love the fact that people come and celebrate there. I love that they have their birthday parties. I love that they're having fun. But I also would like to be able to be in my apartment at the same time without having to join in their celebrations every time they have one. So um, it's mainly the outdoor dining. The outdoor dining is right in the parking lot for one of the um, apartment buildings, and it's actually right on my fire escape. I'm on the sixth floor, but there are times when I can hear the DJ all the way in at the elevator, which it would be through my apartment and through other people's apartments. Um, it, on Wednesday night, I have to listen to their karaoke, and it's not always good karaoke. Um, while I'm watching television, I have to have the soundtrack of bad karaoke. Um, I also like, I'm a teacher, so I try to go to bed reasonably because I have to get up really early. Um, and I often will have their, like every Friday night and even during the week, we have their music like blaring into our, our to my bedroom. And I have reached out, to, I, you know, we, you know, we have noise complaints on 311. I've reached out to men trying to get um, mediation because I actually would like for them just to 
be able to talk with us and participate with us in the community and stay there, but they haven't responded to the mediation requests. So I really don't know what to do to be able to make this, this noise situation re reasonable for us as tenants and for them as a business, because we've followed all of the ways that we know to to get action and nothing has changed. So we're coming to you as a community board for you to help us to be able to approach them, figure out what to do so that we can live in peace and enjoy our lives as well as them having a business and enjoying their lives. So thank you, um, Catherine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Joanne, any other questions? Yeah. I have a question. Um, besides the noise, is there are there any other issues? Uh, that you've noticed or that you're aware of? For me as a tenant, I would say, no, I'm not aware of any issues that okay. specifically come from the Cuddy Lounge. Um, I'm also often asleep <laughs> after okay. like 11 o'clock. So I'm not aware of that. But I like it for me, it is mainly just the noise. So for, my, for me personally, as a community member, that is my complaint is that we figure out a way to take care of their noise. Okay. All right. Thank you. Jeremy, mean, what business is she speaking about? Cuddy Bar and Lounge. Um, it is, uh, I forget, is it on Gun Hill? It's on Gun it's, Hill, right? It's on Boston Road. Boston, Boston Road. Boston right. Road yeah. Formerly it's was Gasolina. Gasolina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Corner of Pace and Boston Road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions for Catherine? We have Angelina um, next. On the agenda. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm actually calling as the property owner and manager that lives on the property. And I know Catherine has been with us as a tenant for well over six years. And the noise level has affected myself, number one, as a human being that lives here. And number two, as a property owner and manager, because everybody that has a complaint knocks at my door, whether it is four in the afternoon or 11 o'clock at night. When I have to reach out to NYPD, I'm referred to 311. When I file a complaint with 311, I usually get the same old story. They've gone out, they found nothing wrong, and it is closed. I have kept recordings of this, and I have them on emails. In addition to that, the problem seems to be that I have had tenants that are facing the back of my property. that are located on the D, E, and F side. So that would be approximately 75 to 80% of the tenants because lines A, B, and only partially of C face the front of the building. And I have had tenants with families that had no problem living here that have had to move out because of the noise. When we're talking about noise, we're talking about noise so loud that it is coming through from the Boston Road side. And you could clearly hear it on the Holland Avenue side and those decibels are not low. They are extremely loud. They had COVID going on, they were open. They also had outdoor dining, nobody had masks on. I don't go there in person because I don't want to be physically harmed. I don't need people coming from their bar into my property, fighting, screaming, and yelling because they do come at four, 4.45 in the morning around the block to get their cars and double park and so forth. And it's gotten to the point where it's ridiculous. If I have to lose tenants and not get rent paid, that's a problem. Everybody should be able to have a business in the United States and conduct it just like everybody else. Grew up in the same area. I've been in this area 51 years. We had all kinds of restaurants, but we've never had this issue. When it's affecting other business Thank owners, Angelina. it's a problem. Angelina, we got it. Thank you. Thank you. You okay. excellent points. We heard you. We hear you. Thank so, you. I have a question. Okay. Um, do you, you state I, there are some videos and so forth for some real disruptive behavior. Could you describe some of that, Angelina? Well, I know that Catherine has had the ability to actually audio and videotape it because the angle that I could get it from, I would physically have to go to a person's apartment on that side. Catherine, I believe, could join in because Catherine actually has sent videos to, I believe, Jeremy, and how loud it's gotten. And I've had yeah. uh, tenants send it to me. Yeah, I saw those earlier today. I don't remember when they were sent. I can forward it on to, to you, Joanne, the board, whoever wants it. Okay. 
I, I, if there are any, I, can I just say something? Because uh, unfortunately, we we were supposed to um, review this uh, as far as a you know as a renewal, and I'm sorry I neglected during the um, during my presentation. Uh, but we can actually, I can, I've heard so many things that um, that I actually am thinking that we should send a motion of objection. To, for this liquor license. If anybody wants to chime in, that's where I'm heading now because I've heard just too many things about it. Hello, Joe. Too Thompson. many negative things. Joe Thompson. Oh, yeah. Joe. Hey. Yeah, I finally uh, got here. Um, but I did hear that. And I know that uh, the police department has gotten 14 complaints uh, about the noise. Now, there are other things that can be done as far as uh, mitigating the noise. And that is, um, and I think we have to go there again, because first of all, they can stop having uh, the parties in the back. Second of all, they can uh, also have uh, noise uh, barriers uh, put into their, their location. And that would stop some of the noise. And the third thing, they could stop having the noise in the back or the music in the back because most of the bar area is in the front on Boston Road and just to direct the music there. So they can cut the music down, they can create barriers uh, to mitigate the sound of the music and uh, they can redirect the music. Now, I think these are things that they have to understand uh, that we will send a letter of objection if these things are not followed and the people get some type of relief from this. Because uh, other than, than, than that particular thing, they have kept their word pretty much about uh, the hours they keep. Uh, the places during the week are usually closed about midnight. So uh, I've seen, I've been there twice uh, from the outside after I'm midnight. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Places. Thompson. My my mm -hmm. husband, I'm sorry to interrupt. This is Angelina. My husband actually works in as an essential worker for the past 31 years with the same company. Mm -hmm. My husband wakes up at 4 o'clock in the morning. If you go oh, to God. Boston Road at 4.45 in the morning, when my husband has to get his car, there is double and cars that are triple parked with the noise blaring as late as 4 a.m. in the morning. And they start as early as 9 p.m. on Friday nights, and it goes on until they cannot go on anymore. So in reference to regulatory hours, they are not doing it. If a tenant that's living on the sixth floor tells me with a five-year-old child with a fever that they have to put on their air conditioners in the winter time to zone out the noise because the decibel has reached up to 68, inside someone's apartment and inside the elevator in my building, that's not normal. And I'm facing Holland Avenue. If you're reaching 68 decibels on a sound and you are on the sixth floor of a building and you're riding the building elevator and I face Holland Avenue, that's not normal. That's deafening. No, not at all. Not at all. I was referring to the the weekdays, not the weekends. They do it on weekdays. Uh -huh. You could ask Catherine. Karaoke's Wednesday. Tuesday is something else. They advertise it on social media. Well, what time do they normally close? Because it, the, the four a.m. Well, the on two Friday, times Saturdays that I've been there Sundays. during the week, they were closed uh, after I've midnight. Actually, I've actually sent out a letter that they could come. And they could even have access to my backyard and they could videotape anything that they want at any time starting from 10 p.m. on. And so help me God if any of these tenants are lying. I've had to go on to tenants' doors at 10 o'clock at night with little children. And I have asked my tenants to turn down their TVs. And the tenant grabbed me by the arm and said, you think that's my TV? That's my living room. Come with me to my window. This is what we hear every night. And I don't know how to answer that. Because they have a okay, you know, a you know, I week. think, uh, Angelina, I think uh, you made a good point, and uh, you, you, you are there, and you're suffering. Your tennis is suffering. So, Joe, I think you're right on that. Um, I think we should send uh, a letter of objection uh, based on the noise factor 
Can we make and, a motion? Well, one thing, one more thing. <laughs> and, and then we are going to visit and we will visit again. And I will talk to the ownership again uh, about the noise. I've spoken to the police and uh, the police are pretty much, their hands are pretty much tied now uh, because of regulations and new regulations. Uh, but I will talk to them again. I will tell them that we are doing this, that we are sending a letter of objection. And if they want to, uh, if they want that letter to go away, then they're gonna have to stop the noise because we can always send a second letter. But, um, and let's see what so, happens. But the big point here is to stop the noise. So Joanne makes the motion of objection. Joe Thompson seconds it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any that other works. any discussion by board members? So the letter of obje an email of objection to the state liquor authority regarding Cuddy Bar and Lounge on Boston Road. Any? Um, so you want to take the vote, Joanne? Are any are there any objections or abstentions? I abstain. I abstain. Christina Contreras. Okay. Okay, Christina abstains. Who 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 else who was that? Malcolm. Malcolm. Who Malcolm. Was that? Malcolm. So two abstentions. This is Malcolm Naomi and Christina. Naomi Pemberton, I abstain. Okay, that's three. Who's somebody else spoke? Christian Amato abstaining. Christian Amato. So that's what four abstentions. Juanita okay. Rachel abstaining. Okay, Juanita's in. Anybody else? That's Wait, five. Jeremy, Jeremy, I keep getting kicked out. I don't know what we're voting on. So, so, uh, jo <laughs> so, I, we're sending Joanne, a letter. You can do it or I can do it. It's up to you. We're What's sending up? a letter of objection to their license uh, renewal. So, it's a liquor license application. So, I know you norm, um, well, Lisa, I normally abstains from voting on these. I don't know if you want to abstain, Yahe or Salsa. I know you've abstained from the last okay, look. I, yeah, yeah, case. I abstain. I abstain. Okay. So that's six abstentions. Jeremy, uh, Keith Ram, abstain from yeah. these two. So that's seven. Jeremy, okay. can you hear so, me? Is that? That's Avril. Hey, Avril. Yes, I abstain. Okay, so it's eight abstentions. Um, it's still not a majority. There are some majority in favor of the motion. Unless I'm there's any abstentions. Uh, Jeremy, I'm voting no for it. An abstention. You're voting against or you're abstaining? Wait, uh, you're sending a letter of objection, right? Yes, based on the. Yeah, yeah I'm, for, I'm for the letter of objection. I'm not abstaining. Okay. Oh. All right, so then we already got you. So only eight abstentions. In that case, the unless there's anything else, the motion passes. Okay. We have thirty three members, thirty three members present. Eight abstentions. So just the way just I know some people are still new for for a motion outside of making a bylaw amendment, you need a majority of those present. So that's the case here. So, motion motion Fuchs passed. abstaining. Okay, now we got nine abstentions. So, so carry. All right. The rest is short. We are going to follow up on this. And I do yeah. have a way out. Hold on, Joe. Let me mute everybody because everybody's not muting themselves. Um, hold on. I. I got hold on. Okay. Rabbi, Rabbi Fuchs's phone. Rabbi, you need to Hello? mute yourself. Star six, please. Star six. Okay, did mute. you get I have? Yes, yes, we did. Star six, please. All right. I, I'm just going to delete the chat function altogether because I'm somebody's harassing me. Oh. All right. Go, go ahead, Joe. Were you, were you saying something? Uh, no, I just said that uh, we are going to follow up on this. And uh, if they agree to the terms, 
then we will send a second letter um, because that's the only thing that we have uh, objectionable to this uh, this place. Okay, so that's the short. Just right, so motion. motion carried with nine abstentions. Let's go back to sharing the screen. Going back to the agenda. Um, now I've got to go. Okay, Joe. All right, so uh, Esmeralda uh, Casado, are you still in the meeting? This is uh, business over El Sazon. Forget the rest of the name. On 500 Morris Park Avenue. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Esmeralda? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Um, so it's your, it's your turn to speak. You have two minutes. If you want a, a warning, you have to notify us of that beforehand. To, uh, I'll give oh, her, I'll I'll one. Don't worry about it. Okay, Azumarala, you, you can go. Uh, hi, good night. I'm here to translate uh, to Esmeralda because uh, she doesn't speak English. Okay. So, uh, okay. you start See. now when you, or a little, mm -hmm. allow a little bit more time, maybe? I, I got it, Jeremy. Don't worry about it. I got it. Yep. Go ahead. Is Morales interpreter, please go. So I'm going to help her a little bit. You what got it, I mean, Chris. What I mean about this is, I mean, just take off the 10 seconds or 30 sure. seconds. Or you got it. What I'm trying to do, this is to the lady that's going to translate for Esmeralda. Yes. Uh, Miss Ferrara, which is one of our board members, and he, she is the head of Van Nest Association, brought up some concerns about your restaurant. One of concerns has to do with the fact that there has been a history over there of issues. By saying that, I look at the, like a promise to everybody here in the board, I looked at the questionnaire. And the questionnaire, your accountant wrote down that you're going to have bar services from 10 a.m. weekdays, Monday to Thursday to 4 a.m., and weekends, Friday to Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. and Sunday, of course, 12 noon until 4 a.m. Also, you mentioned that you're gonna have food services from 6 a.m. to 4 a.m. Ask Esmerella, for real, these are the hours that you guys are gonna use? I'm talking about food serving and drinking? Ma'am? Yes. Did you she hear what I asked? She say yes until 4 a.m. in the morning. She's going to cook food. Hold on. She say she's going to work at 1 a.m. Okay. So I'm going to suggest to the committee, like we always done, if most of you guys remember, we always have an agreement with this new uh, businesses, especially when they, we don't know the history or we know history of the previous owners, calling it a hot spot. Can we have an agreement with them? Meaning that, like we used to do, can we have agreement that on week, weekdays, they can serve at least liquor until 12 a.m. and weekends, Friday and Saturday until 1 a.m. It's up to the chair of the committee and the rest of the committee. This is my input so far. It's up to you guys. Uh, Chris, I, I don't propose think... a stipulation agreement, right, Chris? Correct. Well, then we have to meet again because I don't think we're prepared to do it at this meeting. I think it has to be in writing rather than just yeah, a, but... an agreement. So I think well, we have to invite the uh, uh, person uh, um, Esmeralda back to the meeting, uh, the next meeting that we're going to have, uh, which should be mid mid November. Uh, we'll we'll let you know what that is uh, because we can't do this right now because there's well, some other things that have to be worked out. Well, the only thing that I can say is that they provided us with a 30 day notice on the 12th. Okay. 
So after the 30 day notice, it's done. They have the right to submit it. Correct, correct. Okay. So but, but, now, but. now mm -hmm. since we are in a recorded line and we have more than 40, 50 witnesses, I don't think that's called legal. Maybe I'm wrong. Whoever is a lawyer, please step in and say yes or I'm wrong or no, I'm not wrong. So you're and saying it's that, a matter of record since it's recorded. Yeah, it's a matter of record. And after that, okay. when I go in the office on Wednesday, I fill it up. They can come, they can sign it in. I can give them a copy. I can keep a copy for myself and send it to SLA. Okay, so does, if does, she, agree, the way. does she agree to that to, yes. uh, to midnight? Okay. Well, uh, the other well, thing is, is the is, committee is, okay with it though? Is it uh, anybody from the committee? Can you um, unmute no. yourselves and weigh in on this? I I will yeah. agree with the Chris what he uh, proposed. Okay. I think it's we did that in the past, and we can continue doing here and give them okay. after two years we can revisit and extend the hours later on. Okay. This All is right. so, this is a um, a very small place, and there are people that live actually above it and to the right of it and behind it. So it's in a residential. Um, so is there going to be live music? Because uh, that was a stipulation in the past, which that business broke that and there was live music in there. Uh, there was a pool table, which was asked to be removed that was put back in. Uh, that was a stipulation in the past. Um, and also not to board up the window so you can't see inside. Um, well, I'm looking at the form, our question here, it says type of sound equipment, radio, Bluetooth speakers. That's what it says here. That could get very loud. It's just that it doesn't, you know, get overbearing. One thing I can tell you, it's signed by the principal. So if she going to switch and do something else, I mean, we can put it in agreement without a problem. We can put extra conditions on it and the agree the hold on the agreement can be done at any time you can do it six months from now correct and as long as they agree to it it's binding i agree so okay anyone else we're, are we in a discussion form right now or no we haven't even made the um motion yet uh, okay i'm uh I'm concerned about the, the location. It's uh, right around the corner from a mosque, less than uh, eight houses away from a mosque. Just to be sensitive to the community. Um, usually everybody knows I abstain. I don't think you know my vote does anything, whether it brings it up or down, but this one is a little sensitive since it's uh, really close to a house of worship, especially a house of worship that uh, does not encourage alcohol, just to be sensitive to the community. Bernadette already has said that it's uh, in a residential area. I just want to add uh, the mosque part on Adams Street. Uh, yes, that's a new mosque. Away. That's a new mosque as of last year, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's correct. But I think you have 200 feet um, away from any um, I know, worship. Uh, this is, does it 200 feet from that mass? Um, I, I, I? I'll measure it right now on Google Earth. I think it, I think it's just about 200. Let me double check and I'll get right back to you. The only thing yeah. we have a problem with that is because if they have a lawyer, they can fight it easy because this is grandfather. If in that location has been liquor before, uh, then it's I, been liquor before. Chris and Jeremy, um, this is Christian. I'd just also like to add, I don't know if the business owner is still on the, the meeting, um, but one thing I'd like to add uh, for her sake is that she should probably seek guidance from her own lawyer as well. And we also have to be cognizant of, of any potential language barrier here in terms of fully comprehending um, everything that's coming towards her. Well, Christian, I hope that the lady that spoke is translating everything to her. First yes. and I, second. I hope so. First and second. Chris, I, you the know, I, I think, I think, I think the lady is trans. I heard her. Chris, I don't think that's an issue. Please don't bring that up. Yeah. Uh, if 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 she doesn't want to agree, you gotta understand, guys. This is a deal between Community Board Eleven and the owner. She can rightfully so refuse it and keep the four a.m., which is the law of this state. <laughs> you gotta understand that part. Yes, you. I'll have to. It's true. So it's up to her to decide. 
to to accept the agreement or not? Well, it would be it would be nice to be a good neighbor, especially to people who live there. But again, that is up to the owner, and that will probably be taken into consideration for future. So it's we all so, have to be cohabitate and be good neighbors. So 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 because this is taking up so much time, is it safe to say that yeah, maybe Joanne's right, maybe we should try to discuss this separately? I mean, um I, I don't know. I, I think I think I think it's appropriate, to be honest. To, to make to make a motion. Uh, remember we have started this, remember Chris said we have until the twelfth. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy, can we make so a we motion? Have, we have to make, we have a vote tonight. Okay, so we can make a a, a motion with the stipulation of midnight. Correct. Okay, Correct. so I'm going to make a motion. Is that can for I which, make a motion which at days? this point? For which days? Midnight for uh, week, week oh, and, and Monday to Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, right. Midnight, Chris. What, say it again. Midnight from Monday to Thursday. Okay. Until okay. twelve. And then the one o'clock one is from when? Let me try this. Go back. Go back. Let, let Chris repeat it. Back. Yeah. If you give me a chance, I Should, can do that. Shouldn't it be? Shouldn't it be midnight Sunday to Thursday? Wait. Let, let Chris. Wait, wait. 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 Debbie. Let, let Chris. Let Chris finish okay. up. We, we, we've continued like this. We're gonna kill all businesses all around. Yes. Right. So let's do it like this. Weekdays, Monday to Thursday, six a.m. to twelve uh, midnight. Weekends. 6 a.m., which weekends are Friday and Saturday, 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. Right. And Sunday, 6 a.m., okay. make it to 12 because, I mean. People have to go to work. Yeah. 12 to 12. 12, 12 to 12. 12. Hold on, everybody. Angelina, you, you can't share your screen or I will have to boot you from the. Whatever. That. Who's that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think she's showing the. the can you. You don't have to share your screen. Come on, this is in the middle of a meeting. I'm gonna, Angelina. I know you're trying to help, but if you could stop sharing your screen, you she's she's. Hold on. I don't know how to stop it. There you go. Yeah. Oh, hold on. You can override it. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm working on that. I don't know why it's not. There you go. All right. So, thank, all right. Continue. One more time. Bar service is ours. It's going to be, instead of 6, it's going to be 10 a.m. to 12 midnight, Monday to Thursday. Weekends, which is Friday and Saturday, meaning Friday to Saturday, Saturday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. And Sunday again, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. But before you vote, guys, we got to ask the lady Correct. if she's okay with it. Correct. So, okay. Hello, ma'am. Tra translator. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Yes, I'm here. Did you translate it to Esmeralda what I asked, what I say? If she's she, okay she, with it? She say, she said yes. She so let me repeat it again, please, once more. Can you tell her that it's going to be just for the bar services? I'm not talking about food. If you guys want to do food until 4 a.m., you go ahead. So the okay. bar service is going to be Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. to midnight. Okay. Esmeralda dice que va a ser de hasta las 12, de lunes a jueves. Okay. Dile que sí. Sí. Okay. Weekends. Yes. Okay. Weekends, which is Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. De viernes sí. a domingo de 10 a 1 de la mañana. A sábado hasta la 1. She said yes. Okay. Then on Sunday, okay. it's going to be 12 p.m. until 12 a.m. O de 12 a 12 los domingos. She say yes. Okay, now tell her, explain to her that this is something that she has to sign on it, meaning she cannot break this agreement. Uh, no, I agree with this. 
Dice que tú no puedes romperle como, como el, el acuerdo, ¿verdad, Rodolfo? Dile que yo estoy de acuerdo que ella es mi fan. Dile que sí, que yo estoy de acuerdo, que, que, que sí, que si tengo que firmar algo, ¿dónde tengo que firmar? She says she is agreeing yeah, with everyone. Tell her, tell her to come on Wednesday at the same okay. office. Hold on. The board got to vote on this still, right? Okay. Right. I'm with sorry. Stipulation. Let, let the board vote for it. Chris, can you hear me? Uh, go ahead, Ellie. Uh, I thought a concern was whether this person was related to previous owners. Why haven't we been just discussing that? I mean, thank you, Ellie. Thank you. Thanks this for bringing store it up. Has been, this store has been closed two years, plus another two <laughs> years that they've been in, in, we're talking about four years. Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not in, in, in involved in the sense that I cannot find any agency that they can give me information if there are any, any relations to the old owners. Do you try asking the, uh, this owner? I don't know the name of the old owner, who it is. I get that, but what about asking this owner if there's a relationship between uh, this owner and the previous owner? Why don't we do that? Go ahead, ask. Hi, okay. Lily. Can you ask if she's related to the old owner about from four years ago? No, she's saying no. She don't know him. There you go. So, so hold on. Let's 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 Make ask a motion. Question. How did how did she come into acquiring this business? Second, How did she find out about this business, ma'am? About this this establishment? Hello. Hello. She needs like an interpreter, right? One second, please. Oh, that one. She says she 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 has a business there before, like six years ago. And and now she, she she wants to open again. Okay, there is the answer, guys. So to, to summarize, mean, to summarize, so this is the same owner. Correct? Either the same owner like she was the owner four years ago. ago. Chris, there should be some paperwork with the previous stipulations from 500 Morris Park Avenue in Community Board 11's files. Okay, I have to go on Wednesday and relook. So, you know, guys, I would appreciate again. it. Yep. Yeah, I, can, I can look at Monday too. I'm seeing that on the paperwork she sent that I'm reading, she used to be a manager at Nuevo Amanecer Restaurant, Sports and Bar Corporation. And the Mera's Restaurant Corp, I don't remember. The first one I remember, the second one I don't remember, the Mera. Sorry, Chris, uh, she said she, she was the owner of the Nuevo Amanecer. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. So there's your answer, Bernadette. She, well, she's changing the number. Name. The name, sorry. Number is name in Spanish, right? Okay. The song to the son de mi abuela. So she just only changing the name. What happened? Why she was she let go in the beginning? Sorry, what did you say? Why did she let go of the restaurant? No, because it's been closed for a while. It was fixing the, the place and then the pandemic come. That place uh, is closed like four years ago. Right. Okay, you know, guys, I, I, I think that you should table it. Bring it up at the meeting again. Okay. okay. Chris, I think okay, we're going to table, table it because we're going to miss the deadline. Can we just, uh, I think we have enough information to vote on it? Yes, I think so. Okay. Because it sounded like she was the owner. I agree. So just to just be clear, everybody, a stipulation agreement, she agrees to it, she signs it, it's binding. 
the state liquor authority will enforce it. Okay. So that's the Chris, sounds good. So okay. is everybody clear on the times for the stipulation agreement? Yes. Um, can I add? Can I add some stuff to the stipulation, Joanne? I well, you can make a suggestion. Well, we can okay. see if that she agrees to it. Okay, that there is no pool table, and that the windows are not blocked up with advertisements so that nobody can see inside. So the okay, uh, Bernadette, I can promise you on Monday if it happens, Jeremy can go over there. Jer, if you go over there, I well, Harry, Harry, Harriet's it. going in tomorrow if, if she can find the file. Okay, if she can find the file, gotta be a no stipulation over there from the previous restaurant that we have. And I remember it was something about the table, the pool table. Yes. So it's a very so, small place and it was you know, it, it was not supposed to, it was supposed to be a restaurant and then it turned into a lounge. Right. Okay. Okay, so we can add that to the stipulation. So did she agree to it. Yeah, but we have to add we have to see if she agrees to it. A new so no pool can, table and no blocking the windows. Base, it's not just advertisements, Bernadette. No blocking the windows, period, right? Yeah, there was even the door, the glass door was blocked with stuff that you couldn't see inside. I, I had to open the door and go in. Okay, so, is that against the law? Because they yes, have to have visual. Thank you. The base okay. had, had a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a um, hidden lounge. Sorry, yeah. Esmeralda, now she's fixing all the place and she put the walls like clear. Everybody can see okay. inside the, the place. Normal pool table. They also had live music too when that was that was not supposed to be. Bernadette, uh, I uh, let me add a piece here. I rem I remember they are, they are fixing the place. Yes, they have. You could see inside. You could see everything from inside. There's glass there now. I for the pool table is the one that I'm concerned about. I don't, she just mentioned that they don't have no pool table. Okay. But there, yeah, there was a speculation before that. I mean, there was signed. Mr. G, or the, Mr. Hackman used to go there. Yes. And, you know, he had come up to the meeting and mentioned that everything was fine so far. So there was, they were abiding with this speculation that they had all before. So right now, whatever we are made in this hours and everything, we should be, we should call a vote tonight. Okay. So can I make a motion? Yes. yes. So I'll make a motion to send an email of no objection to the SLA regarding El Sazon de Mi, Mi Abuela Corporation for liquor, wine, and beer with stipulation of hours that we discussed, uh, that the windows are clear, and that there will be no pool table. I second. second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Well, we I think we discussed it. <laughs> to death. Uh, all, in, all, in, all in favor. All in favor? Or oh, actually, any objections? Easier. I object. Okay. Roll I roll object. Oh, oh. One person at a time. How can, how can you object well, when you abstain all the time? I don't well, Excuse me, I don't abstain. No, Ayahe. He, he oh. abstains and then okay. he, no, he objects. It's a personal preference. Yes, one person at a time, please. Darrell, you said something. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna abstain because I don't know much about this. Uh, this particular, you know, business. But uh, right. that's it. That, just let's move on. Darrell's abstaining. Who else? I object. Okay. That's Andrea. Andrea. I let's, object. Let's, let's, yeah, let's stick with objections. So Andrea, Debbie, who else? That's it. I'm objecting. Yeah, he's objecting. Yeah, he's objecting. Three objections. I'd like to abstain till we get more information. Okay, this is like, okay, 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 please. Okay, we are objections. All right, Jeremy, it's Sandy. I object. Okay. Okay, so four objections. Okay, moving on to abstentions. Durrell. Who else mentioned? Dur Edith. Mm hmm. Yes. Who else? Did you get Christina Contreras? Uh, no, no, I got you now. It's three, three abstentions. Anybody else? So four objections, three abstentions. Motion carries. Let's move on. Let's move on. Great. 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 Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Back to the agenda. One hour. 
So Roxanne Delgado, CB11 resident. Yes, I would like a 30 second warning, please. Okay, you got it. 30 Thank seconds. you so much. I like to uh, state that I hope everybody will ha has read or will read the article five days ago in New York Post regarding Community Board 11 and the Stillwell Shelter. And this is why I said last month and I continue to say today, it's very vital that we have public input first before the board votes on any motion. And not only because you are not uh, listening to the public, but there may be conflict of interest where the post stated there was allegation of someone pushing this for self interest of self gain. I won't go into details. You can read the article yourself. And regarding Mother Teresa, that was another example. Not only did they circumvent the public, but then they misrepresented the motion saying that the councilman donated. He didn't donate anything. It was our money he funded. And plus, they didn't provide with you, you with that accurate uh, location. And with the Stillwell shelter, they actually proposed alternate sites with no public input or even a vote on it. And those alternate sites were much closer to schools, proximity, and homes by attending majority of black and brown community. And, you know, we really need to look at the whole board really has to look to make the people speak first to hear any objection and second to know what you're voting on. Because some people who will be put under investigation are not doing the right thing in this board. There is for self gain and what they're voting on is harming our community. It's nothing personal, but when they're putting things that harms our community, then I have to advocate for my community. So I please plead with the board, please let the public speak first before you vote on any matter and make sure you have all the information needed before you vote on something. Don't rely on the seconds or anyone else assuming they're they're doing it in good faith because they may not be doing so. All right, anyhow, have a good night. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then next gallery session speaker is Owen Holloway, Morris Park Library. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to uh, share a couple of updates. So we're open fully to the community. Um, we were starting to plan some in-person programming, but Hurricane Ida had different uh, ideas in mind. Um, our lower level took uh, almost three feet of water, and we just uh, are completing a remediation of the lower level space. So our contractors have come in and replaced the sheet wall, sheetrock, and painted. And so um, Allerton also had some flooding um, in their lower level, so they're also an active construction uh, zone to bring us back to pre-storm uh, quality. Um, so with that said, we're waiting on some detailed cleaning and then we should be able to open up for in-person programming and to reestablish our early literacy space, which we lost all the furniture, toys, learning, everything was demolished in the early literacy space. So we're gonna start slow and steady. We're not gonna do anything grandiose, but the patrons are begging for it. So we're up for the challenge. Um, I just wanna say that outside is full scaffolding. So we're not as busy as we used to, and we've had some intermittent closures due to the ongoing construction from our upstairs neighbor who happens to be the new landlord he's not, very, he's not very communicative in terms of what he'll be doing which is why i've had to close the branch um a couple of times just because of the noise or the staff breathing in harmful dust particles in the air making it not safe for us to be in the building let alone welcoming the, okay, thank you the thank public you. in thank, thank you, you. Okay, this is any questions. We'll move on to Robert Press. Can we were 11 constituent? Robert Press. Robert Press. Yeah, I wasn't going to speak, but uh, obviously you have me on the list. Uh, yep. I, I, do, I did see a registration. He has an old one. Sorry. As far as your uh, stipulations on bars go, they must be for all bars, not single bars. You can't make single stipulations for bars that say you got to do this or you got to do that. It must be for all bars or for new bars. The hours must be the same if you want to close it earlier. On Community Board 8, we had 
a 2 a.m. suggested closing. You, the community board is only, a, uh, it is not making the liquor license. You're only advisory, okay? So you can ask, you can't force a bar to do anything. I see the hands going up and down in here on the TV. Uh, no, just wondering. Uh, my, my real question, my real statement was that the community board needs to put a Pelham Parkway task force back into effect. You have a $139 million project that is going crazy. Pelham Parkway, they, I don't know why they can't finish that project on time. They could do a water filtration plant quicker than they could build this Pelham Parkway uh, extension of the 48-inch water main for future development. And you also have a 36-inch gas main that came or is going right through Community Board 11 that no one knows about. All right, and that's it for me. I'll get I'll re quit early. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Bob. All right. You did register to speak on Friday. Uh, all right. So, last calendar session speaker, uh, Jeanette Reed, New York City Department of the Aging. Are you here? Jeanette Reed, are you un unmuted? Yeah, she maybe didn't stay for the long haul. All right, so uh, moving on to elected officials. Same two two minutes, Jeremy, for them. Two minutes per staffer. Yes, unless it's the elected official themselves, which I don't believe we have. Uh, okay. We have this from the borough president's office. Gonzalez. So maybe. Hey, hello, hello. hello. We, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, perfect. Right. Uh, Good evening, everyone. It's Ish Gonzalez from the Bronx Borough President's Office. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, uh, as usual, the Borough President's monthly report was sent over to the office and to all of the board members. So if anyone has any questions about that or any information in that email, feel free to reach out to me. I would also like to thank all of the new board members for attending the community board orientation, the new board member orientation uh, last week. Uh, all of the presentations from that orientation was also emailed out to you guys. So feel free to look back at that anytime that you need any help with anything. But my information is normally in the chat, but uh, if you do need to get in touch with me, uh, just feel free to reach out to Jeremy. Jeremy has all of my contact information. Um, and if there's anything I can do, please feel free to help me. Uh, not help me. Uh, reach out. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. All right. So, those are the questions. Uh, Sarah, are you here in Jonah's office? Hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm here. Happy yeah. Halloween to everyone. Um, I just have a few announcements and some events that we have coming up this Sunday for Halloween. Um, in front of Big Deal, we have our Safe Treats and Streets event at 2.30, and then we'll be moving on to Westchester Square for Halloween at the Square at 4.30. Um, we also have on November 6th, we have a street co-naming event with the 49th Precinct for Officer Patrick McGovern Way. It'll be at 10 a.m. on November 6th, if anyone would like to come and, um, you know, honor him. Uh, we also ha are working on finalizing details for our Thanksgiving turkey giveaway, as well as other holiday events. As soon as those are confirmed, we will um, inform the community. Any questions, you know, you can always reach out to our office at 718-931-1721. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do we have anything from Councilmember Feliz's office in the meeting? If not, I believe. Jamal from Councilman Riley's office here. Jamal? Yes. Hi. Good night, everyone. I'll be very brief. Um, I'm, we just have uh, three Halloween events. We have a trick or treat with uh, the office of Councilmember Riley tomorrow on um, by Agnes Haywood uh, Playground. That's Barnes Avenue between 215, East 215th and 216th Street. On Saturday, we'll be partnering with um, Team AOC and uh, candidate Marjorie Velasquez for a uh, uh, Halloween. And harvest celebration in, in um, Pelham Park, Pelham Bay Park, uh, picnic area north of the uh, Nature Center. Um, and Sunday, we also have an event in um, Co op City um, hosted by um, the, the, the youth in um, Co op City called a Haunted 
uh, Pirates Adventure. It's a show put on by the children um, in Co-op City in, um, by uh, sec the Section 2 Greenway. Um, as always, um, feel free to please reach out to our office. Our, our office in Co-op City is open by appointment only at 135 Einstein Loop. Um, and our number is 718-684-5509. Thank you. Thank you, Jamal. Uh, I don't know if we have anybody from the mayor's office, comptroller's office, public advocate's office. Uh, Christina, are you still here from the Bronx District Attorney's office? Yes, I am. One moment. Let me quiet the kids down. We should do shits or something. Some stand around. Good evening, everyone. Christina here from the office of the Bronx District Attorney. Uh, one announcement I have is that we have an upcoming reentry resource fair on Saturday. November 6th uh, at Community Board 12, which is located at 4101 White Plains Road. Uh, it'll be taking place from 12 to 4 p.m. So if you know anyone in need of re uh, resources for reentry, such as employment, health care, uh, and other services, please direct them to that event on November 6th. Thank you. Okay, Jeremy. You can continue. Yep. There's a problem with my mute button. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right. So, um, here's uh, do we have anybody from Ocasio Cortez's office? I believe we do. Yes, we do. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, awesome. So, good evening, Community Board 11. My name is Angelica Ramon. And I am a temporary constituent liaison and field representative for the office of Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. So our wonderful Destiny Cruz has stepped away to continue to fulfill her roles um, to the community in different ways. But I also wanted to introduce Daisy Nunez, who will be representing our office at community board meetings moving forward. So Daisy will be your primary point of contact for any issue that our office will have that you may have and you may also find her contact info in the chat so for today i wanted to provide you with some top lines and useful information earlier this month the congresswoman welcomed the first lady dr jill biden to the bronx to the school bronx at ps 83 for a discussion with educators on their challenges and lessons learned on teaching through a pandemic the Congresswoman is in Washington this week fighting for strong climate and family support provisions to remain the President's Build Back Better bill. Also, if you have filed a claim with FEMA and were denied, you may appeal. A toll-free legal assistance hotline is available for those affected by the severe storms and flooding caused by Hurricane Ida. The phone number is 888-399-5459. If you have yet to receive an advocate, uh, receive an advanced child tax credit payment, you must sign up by November 15th. You are eligible for payments even if you are incarcerated, experiencing homelessness, or have no income. If you have already filed your 2019 or 2020 tax return, there is no further action needed. Also, this Friday, November 1st, is the deadline to submit an application with our office to be considered for nomination to four or five five service members academies. Thank you. A U.S. Uh, representative office. Uh, yes, thank you. I just wanted to let everyone know that uh, Congressman Bowman's office in Co-op City is open uh, by appointment uh, currently. Uh, certainly, we're not turning anyone away, but um, we do uh, suggest an appointment be filed. Uh, and I just wanted to say uh, regarding the Build Back Better um, Act, uh, for months, Congressman Bowman has been doing everything he can to get President Biden's Build Back Better agenda across the finish line. As of today, there is not a final reconciliation bill or a deal yet, and there's no vote scheduled on that bill, but we're actively working towards one. The President's Build Back Better Act would ensure that we do not leave women, children, seniors, black and brown people, and people with disabilities behind. It would make essential and long overdue investments in areas like child care, education, housing, and our environment. Unfortunately, a few members of Congress have been blocking this progress, while Congressman Bowman and nearly every other Democrat has supported the White House in this effort. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry. 
Jeremy? Sorry, I don't know. I, can you hear me? I can hear you now. We can hear you now, Jeremy. Uh, there's, something, there's something going on with my mute button. Okay. So, uh, Senator Biagi's office. Uh, yes, good evening. Yes, uh, my name is Jordine Jones and Senator Biagi's chief of staff. Um, Senator wanted to wanted me to give you a, a few updates. Just wanted to remind everyone that currently early voting is going on and that will be through October 31st. There are five ballot measures that need to be considered um, by New Yorkers. So make sure that you turn those over. Um, in addition to that, FEMA and SBA will be providing services to those impacted by IDA through mobile discovery recovery centers. I can send the information to Jeremy as to where those locations will be in the district. Uh, policy wise, the Senator has had 2 bills signed into law by the governor. 1 reduces emissions of air pollutants from petroleum bulk storage facilities and requires them to paint their tanks white, beige, or cream. And this reduces um, the amount of heat that's produced uh, that will also reduce uh, evaporation loss of harmful pollutants to the uh, environment. And the 2nd bill that was signed by the governor requires debt collectors to inform debtors that written communications are available in a large print format. Uh, and the last announcement that I have is regarding um, upcoming events this Saturday, along with Councilman Kevin Riley, Congresswoman, Cong Congresswoman Ocasio Cortez, um, and City Council candidate Marjorie Velasquez, um, Senator Biagi's office will also be participating in the family Halloween and harvest celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. Great. Uh, Senator Bailey or Rivera's office. I did Anybody's here? You remember Caitlin has left that office. Assemblymember Fernandez's office. He's he's our Benedettos. If not, um, old business. Hello, Maria from Assemblywoman Fernandez's office. Hello, everyone. Happy Halloween and good evening. Uh, just a reminder: our office uh, is open for appointment only Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We had our second annual job fair this weekend at Christopher Columbus High School. If anyone who attended or you know anybody who's attended, uh, we'd love some feedback if there's any additional businesses or ways we can improve the event going forward. This uh, weekend, we have two fall events, the Outen Fall Festival with all of our other local elected officials. Saturday, October 30th from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Allerton Avenue between Holland and Wallace Avenues. Then on Sunday, we are partnering with Councilman Joni for the Safe Streets and Treats event. Sunday at Big Deal Supermarket from 2.30 to 4.30. Then on Monday, November 8th, we are hosting a Daffodil Project event with community leader Wanda Hayes at the Palm Parkway houses on the corner of Waring and Paulding Avenues. Again, this is Monday, November 8th from 2 to 4 p.m. I will put all this information as well in the chat box if I'm allowed to do so. Um, if you would like to stay updated with all of our events and office in resources, we send out uh, newsletters as well as post everything on our social media. Please feel free to reach out to our office for any information on how, uh, where to um, receive those. And lastly, I would just like to announce that I will be leaving the assembly member's office. It has been such a pleasure to work with you guys. And I am sure that I will be still seeing some of you around as because I live in the uh, CB 11 community. Um, yeah, that is all. Perfect. Right on time. And thank you very much, Maria and good best thank of luck you. to you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, any oh, that should conclude the elected officials portion. Any old business for main board members. Do you want to go over attendance for somebody? Jeremy, I'd like to make a couple of announcements if I can. Yeah, old business or new business? No, I well, it's a little bit of each, I guess. Let's start with the old and just then a couple of announcements. Yeah. Put it at new business, I guess. All right. So if it's, yeah, if it's a new item we haven't discussed before, let's keep it there. Uh, board member attendance. Once again, if I call out your name, it means I haven't. I had don't do not have you accounted for, or I forgot to that forgot that you told me before the meeting. 
And that sometimes happens. Just follow up with me. Valerie Babb, Junior Campbell, Christine Cruz, Melanie LaHose, Sylvia Mazella, Phyllis Nastasio. Oh, Phyllis, actually, Phyllis is excused. I forgot she told me about that. Um, Cecilia Smoker, Afedar Sorov, Joanne Terralange, and Janice Walcott. I think Harriet, you told me she was excused. All right. Go ahead, Edith. New business. Okay, new business. Uh, being nothing's being done here for Pelham Parkway for Halloween. Uh, the Pelham Parkway Neighborhood Association will be giving out candy goodies to the children in our community tomorrow from 2.30 to whenever we run out of candy. Also, Tuesday night on November 9th, we're having an in-house meeting, and our guests will be Mark Jonai, Natalia Fernandez, and Alessandra Biaggi. Please, everybody's welcome. On November 21st, if we get enough cooked turkeys, there seems to be a shortage. We will be giving a turkey giveaway in front of 2141 Holland Avenue. Everybody is welcome. Thank you, and have a good holiday. Hi, Jeremy. Can I see? Uh, I have some new business. Uh, so Hi. The first. Yep. Hi, Allerton International Merchants is having their annual Halloween sidewalk parade with the kids. We get dressed up in costumes. We go down the avenue. The merchants give out candies to the kids, and we have pizza afterwards. So any kids or parents who want to bring your children, we meet at the corner of Williamsbridge and Allerton at the Ferenga Brothers parking lot, and we'll meet there at 11 o'clock, and we'll step off around 11.15, 11.30. All right, so hope um, if you make it, that'll be great. Thank you. Hey, Brenda. Uh, yes, Van S Neighborhood Alliance will be having their uh, in person meeting on Monday, November 1st at 1830 Amethyst. If you go to our Facebook page, our information is there. We'd like to start promptly at 7 p.m. Everybody is welcome. And, uh, we will be having a Mar uh, Marjorie Velasquez as the uh, November 2nd candidate for City Council District 13 as our guest speaker. And uh, everybody is welcome. Also, uh, Vanist, we were going, we're going to have a, um, um, in partnership with East History uh, Forum, the Veterans Day ceremony on November 11th at 12 noon or 12 15 try to get there early and uh, everybody is welcome that is at the corner of mead street and union port road and again that is um, our veterans day ceremony and um, the last thing that i will leave you with is that hopefully with regards to this new homeless shelter that is proposed by uh, the city on white plains road um, just keep your ears out. Hopefully we'll be able to have some sort of town hall meeting. Thank you. Bernadette. Yes. Is that Maybe. Edith? Yes, it yes. is. Bernadette, I'm looking forward to a town hall meeting because this affects our entire community, no matter where we are. Yes. Yes, it does. Van Est, Morris Park. And Everybody, and it affects one, it affects all of us. Yes, we will, we will work on it to be continued. Well, call on me if you need me. Okay, definitely will. Any other Hello. new business? Hello, Jeremy, I just want to let you know I'm here. Cecilia Smoker. Oh, Happy great, thank you. thank you, Cecilia. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Well, I hello. I've been trying to speak here. <laughs> Don't try it, Debbie. Do. <laughs> yeah, but no, everybody, everybody keeps on cutting me off. Yep, yeah, go. No, I, I know. I've been. I was emailing you about the response that I got from Joanna Rojas about the paving of Esplanade, and. I was asking for that road to be paved well before the pedestrian ramps were being put in. So I, I don't understand why it's going to take over a year for them to pave a road that I've been asking for to be paved for over a year yeah, now. So, 
So I spoke to Joanna Rojas. Chris and I spoke to her earlier today. Hold on. I'm going to mute everybody. All right. So Chris, Chris and I spoke to uh, Joanna Rojas earlier today. They said they did try to get this done. Uh, unfortunately, the city didn't get back to them in time. And then by then they had to take time for design, yada, yada, yada. So long story short, it's not going to get done when we would like it to. Um, I mean, it, what design does it need to do to put down the asphalt? So, so that is everybody thinks it's easy, but it's not. So maybe we should have one on one with Joanna. Is that are you up for that? Uh, Jer, I, I already sent her an email and chronologically it was explained why it's taking so long for that place to be repaved. First of all, I know I got I got the email before I. Baby, I heard you. Let me finish. So it was you that proposed that a ramp needed to be done there. So from a proposal to be happening, to be approved, to be even uh, occurring, because the start is going to be there, it takes a while. Now the ramp and everything is done, but it has passed the timing to be about, you know, uh, paved. So, like I said, I've sent it everything in details chronologically of whatever happened from the July of 2020 to today, which is October 2021. I was asking for the for it to be paved even before the pedestrian ramp. Yeah, and but how are you going to pave something the, when you're going to do the, the, the excuse was different then, and now they're giving that excuse now. It's they keep on just giving different excuses to please them themselves. It's not about pleasing so themselves. There's certain point, things that take time. Well, at this point, if you're at this point, I think it, we need to re reach out to elected. I think that's the only way you're going to really get any type of real response more than what we've gotten so far. All right. Yeah, apparently, because it seems there's no accountability with the uh, with the Pelham Parkway project because they just seem to do whatever they just want to do. Yeah, so we got to get elected and involved because remember, we are an advisory board. We rely on you know basically relationships to get things done, and now we have to attack touch upon elected relationships. All right. Yep. So yep. Any, anything else? I think Shredo made a motion to adjourn and it was seconded. I don't remember. I second by. Second it. I seconded. Everybody seconded. Okay. <laughs> All in favor. Peace. Open for discussion. No. Peace. Every, right, everyone says no. <laughs> no. Peace. No objections. No abstentions. Yep. Meeting ends at 925. Good call. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe for Halloween.